In the last episode, we explained the anatomy of the earthquake of December 26, 2004, which led to the creation of a devastating tsunami wave that immediately began to spread in all directions, but especially in the west-east direction. The country closest to the epicenter was Indonesia, or rather, its northwestern island of Sumatra with the province of Aceh, with a distance of only 160 kilometers from the site of the tremor. The wave traveled the first 120 kilometers towards Indonesia in just 10 minutes. Welcome to the next video on the Top Topics channel, a series of videos on the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. It spread in the deep ocean as an inconspicuous wave crest with a height of a few meters at a speed of around 800 kilometers per hour. Approximately 40 kilometers offshore, the coastal shelf began to rise and the wave began to rub more strongly against the ever-rising bottom. This caused its considerable slowdown, but also its height gain. Gradually, a wall of water approximately 30 meters high and 200 kilometers wide was formed as it continued to approach the shore. The wave reached the shores of Aceh approximately 20 minutes after the tremor. The most devastating impact was on the town of Mulebo, a town of 50,000 which stood directly across the epicenter unprotected by any natural barrier, such as an island or coral reef. According to surviving witnesses, a few minutes after the tremor, the sea receded ominously by 500 meters, exposing the seabed. People had no idea that this was a warning sign of approaching wave. In a few minutes, the seabed was again flooded with rapidly advancing one meter high foamy water. Moments later, a wall of water, approximately 25 meters high, appeared on the horizon. Witnesses said that it made sounds like an approaching heavy storm. Although people made a frantic escape, within minutes, the wave swept into the city, destroying 80% of the buildings in an instant, killing about 10,000 people and reaching a distance of 5 kilometers from the coast. The wave continued to devastate entire areas to the north. Towns, villages, forests and fields disappeared in a blink of an eye. Longa is a small coastal community about 13 kilometers southwest of Banda Aceh, located on a flat coastal plain between two rainforest-covered hills overlooking a large bay and known for its large, white, sandy beach and surf. Witnesses described the arrival of the wave as follows. As the earth shook, the sea immediately receded temporarily, revealing massive coral reefs. Approximately 20 minutes later, huge black waves, about 35 meters high, appeared on the distant horizon. The first wave came very quickly, a frothing mass of water, about two and a half meter high. The second and third waves, were between 20 and 35 meters high, and by the time they reached the shore, they looked like gigantic waves, suitable for surfing, but, to quote, taller than coconut palms the size of a small mountain. The tsunami washed ashore large ships and destroyed a cement mining facility near the Lampuk coast, where the tsunami reached the fourth floor of a building. 
all infrastructure in the area was destroyed and approximately 6,000 people died. The wave then reached the very northern tip of Asik, where the provincial capital, Banda Asik, with a population of 250,000 is located. Here, an interesting phenomenon, which we'll encounter in later episodes as well, occurred. And that is diffraction. Even though these islands were in the path of the tsunami and absorbed much of its energy from the west, the wave, thanks to diffraction, encircled the islands, intensified its effect and hit the city from this northwesterly direction. The inhabitants were caught completely unprepared, most of them trying to get their loved ones out of the aftershocks, unaware of the destruction that was coming. Local eyewitnesses described the arrival of three large waves, with the first wave slightly inundating the sea and rising to the foundations of coastal buildings, followed a few minutes later by a sudden and massive retreat of the sea at the port of Yuli Lue. A few minutes later, two large, black-colored, steep waves appeared. Eyewitnesses described the tsunami as a black giant, a mountain and a wall of water. The height of the waves when they reach the shore is estimated at 20 meters and it's therefore clear that the coastal districts were swept away with enormous force. Video footage taken by an eyewitness shows torrents of black water rushing through the windows of a two-story residential neighborhood located a whopping 3.2 kilometers inland. Amateur footage shot in the middle of the city additionally captured water gushing through the city streets. The depth of the water current in the city was at the second floor level. Witness footage also showed the Asik River flowing back in a strong current, carrying large amounts of debris and people from destroyed villages on the coast. This debris was found up to 40 kilometers inland. Especially in the northwestern parts of the city, the level of destruction was extreme, as these photos show. The tsunami claimed approximately 60,000 lives in the city. In total, the tsunami in Indonesia claimed 168,000 lives and caused enormous damage to property and the economy of the entire region. Most of the damage has now been repaired and the city of Banda Esek has undergone significant modernization. Unfortunately, however, it is ill-prepared for the next tsunami. Warning systems have been installed, but passive protection in the form of massive breakwaters, such as those in Japan, for example, is still lacking. The horrors of the 2004 tsunami are commemorated by several memorials that remind of this worst disaster in Indonesian history. The wave continued eastwards into the shallow Andaman Sea, at the end of which, about 500 kilometers east of Indonesia, are Thailand and Malaysia. But we'll talk about them in later episodes. However, in the next episode, We'll take a look at the wave's strike on the Nicobar Islands, which became a victim of the wave few moments after Indonesia. Friends, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe the channel so you don't miss the next video. Don't forget to give us a like and we'll see you at the next episode.